Let me welcome each and every one in the Saviour's name. It is lovely that we're able to join once again in the house of the Lord together and to have this fellowship and this opportunity to worship the Lord. And we do thank and praise the Lord for his hand of mercy upon each one, even during this lockdown, lockdown time, and for his hand of preservation and his hand of mercy and help even in these days. I just need to go through some guidelines and these will be, have to be highlighted at the start of each of our services uh, over the next number of weeks. But can we reiterate, if you've seen the, the safety videos that were put together, just to reiterate some of those points that were brought out uh, from them. If you or any member of your family is suffering and showing any symptoms at all of COVID-19, whether it be fever, cold, flu, then we do request that you withdraw and watch from home just for the time until it is safe for you to return. We want to keep the doors open. We want to make sure that everyone is safe. And the rule, the regulation is that if anyone was to be diagnosed with COVID, then the church would then be closed for a period of two weeks uh, to ensure the quarantine time. So if you or any member of your family is showing symptoms, then please we request uh, respectfully that you just withdraw for that period of time. And then as you're well aware, we're maintaining the social distancing in and coming in and going out from the church. And I do respect and remember that as well. I want to thank each one this evening. I want to thank our committee as well for their efforts in getting the building ready and even for bringing you in this evening. Can we say that where you're sitting tonight is where you'll be sitting for the foreseeable future? So the hymn books that are in front of you and for you there are the hymn books you will be using in uh, the future to come each and every week. And you are at liberty, can we say this, that each one is at liberty. If you would rather wear the face mask or the gloves at this time, you're completely uh, free to do so. And we are not lifting an offering at any of our services, but the baskets will be at the door on your way out. And can we just say at this point, we'll be mentioned again on Sunday, but we do want to thank uh, those that have been sending their offerings and those that have been setting them aside, then we encourage you uh, to bring them in in the weeks to come. Can we also say that the cleaning rota, for those that are on it, is restarting? Uh, but can we say to those that are on the cleaning rota that all you will be asked to do uh, for the next number of weeks is simply hoover uh, the floors. The pews will be cleaned by the committee, the toilets will be cleaned by the committee, and all of the woodwork and the minor hall is out of use really at this time unless it's needed for overflow. So it's really those that are on the cleaning committee, it's a case of just the floor in here and in the hallway for the time being. Can we also say just at the end of the service, um, once our time of prayer is over, then we'll be guiding and directing as to how to leave the building. And I'll be going row by row at this time just so that each one, uh, it's not a case of a mass gathering at the door. I won't be going to the door and there'll be no handshaking at this time as you can imagine. The church uh, will be open on Sunday morning at 11.15 for you to come in. At this time uh, the decision has been taken that there won't be any prayer times before the services and can we just encourage you to pray before you come to church, pray on your way to church, but it will be coming straight in at 11.15 and in the service half 11 and the evening service will be continuing online just at this time. And as I said, I do want to thank each one for your support, for your encouragement, for your prayers over these weeks. And we do certainly give all the glory and the praise indeed to the Lord. We're going to sing just a few verses together of the hymn number six. The hymn number six on the page 177. The hymn number 6 to page 177, Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute. Bring ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee his praise should sing. The hymn number 6, and we're going to sing the verses 1, 3, and 5, please. Stand as we sing. Praise. 
through the first verse I suddenly remembered this little lapel mic and it's connected to the camera because then it's going to be uploaded afterwards for those that are shielding and unable to join with us but it's going to hear only me singing and I thought I need to get this off and I need to stand like this and sing because whoever's shielding and whoever joins in at home after I do apologize that you've had to listen to the first verse of my singing Whenever we first closed the church uh, for the time of lockdown and we said that we were going to endeavour to keep the, the preaching side of things up, some did mention, oh, would you not sing? No. <laughs> but those poor people that are going to listen in later will have had a glimpse of what it would have been like if I had been singing solos to you every week. We're going to turn in God's word this evening to Psalm 122. Psalm 122. It is entitled A Song of Degrees of David. Psalm 122. We're going to take the time to read the nine verses together. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Amen. And may God bless the reading of his precious and his infallible word. You may have guessed my text for this evening. It is the verse number one, where the David, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Simply entitled the message this evening, The Joy of Going to God's House. The Joy of Going to God's House. Let's have a word of prayer together, please. Father in heaven, 
We do come before thee with praise and with thanksgiving in our hearts. We do rejoice, O God, in this opportunity to gather together in thy house this evening. We thank and praise thee for thy overruling in all circumstances. And, O God, for the churches being able to open up, to gather together to worship and to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee, O God, and we do raise our Ebenezers unto thee this night, giving thee all of the thanks and the praise for watching over each and every one over this lockdown time. We do pray, O God, that thou will continue to be with thy people, that thou will bless each one that is gathered here this evening, that thou will bless, O God, those that are at home, Lord, unable to join with us just at this time. We pray that even soon that we will have the joy of seeing all of our brethren and sisters and each one associated with this church coming in once again to worship and to praise at thy most glorious name. Lord, do bless us now as we come to consider thy word. We thank thee that thy word is the sole authority even for us, that it is our rule and practice, O God. We do rejoice that thy word is perfect, that thy word is set in heaven forever. And Lord, as we come to it tonight, we pray that thou wilt teach us afresh. We pray, O God, that thou wilt encourage us, that thou wilt enable us to grow in grace and in the things of God. Bless us now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. The finest name that was ever given to the church outside of what it says in the Bible was given by John Bunyan. And John Bunyan described the church and called it Palace Beautiful. And yet when you consider John Bunyan's day in which he lived and you consider the churches that he would have been associated with and you compare them to what we think of a church today. Well, in Bunyan's day, churches consisted of nothing greater than barns. And yet in his eyes, they were beautiful palaces. The congregation would sit upon wooden benches with wind blowing in around them and cracks in the rafters looking up to the skies. None of which makes for a very beautiful place, does it? If I was saying that church consisted of sitting in hard little wooden benches and the wind howling in around you, you might not be very interested or very encouraged to come. But yet for Bunyan, in his day, because of where it was and what it was, he described it as being the palace beautiful. You know, the joy of the Lord was there for Bunyan. Whenever Bunyan went to the house of the Lord, he went and he realized that he went there out of love for the Lord. And out of joy in his heart, which was evident and ought to be evident in every child of God who gathered to the Lord's house. You know, I counted, just to confirm, it's 15 weeks since we were last together in this house. Our last prayer meeting, our last time in the house, was a Wednesday night. A deputation meeting for Precious House Orphanage in Nepal, when Mr. David Aiken was here on behalf of the mission board. And from that meeting, we have been confined to worshipping the Lord from home and listening to the preaching of God's Word from the sofa. I won't ask how you were dressed. I don't want to put that emphasis on anyone, but for the last number of weeks, that's what our situation has been. And we do thank God for the means that were available to us. You consider 1918 when the Spanish flu came and swept across Europe. There were no tape recorders, CD players, internet in any way, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it may be. There was nothing like that in 1918 when they last closed the churches for a pandemic. And we do thank the Lord for the means that we were able to use and to hear God's word. But can I say to each one and to those that are listening at home that listening from the confines of your home does not parallel with actually coming into the house of the Lord. Yes, the internet and those means have been a vital tool over those weeks, and they continue to be for those that are shielded, and for those that are unable to join with us for the reasons that we all know. But they are not the same as gathering in God's house. They are good. And for those unable to come, yes, But for those that would rather sit at home just simply out of laziness 
are out of an attitude that they simply do not want to come. And they think, well, if it's online, then that saves me coming. Then that is wrong. Hebrews 10 and 25, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying this simply forcing people and pressurizing people to come to the house of the Lord. Because, as we all know, this pandemic is very much real. And it is a very hard pandemic, and it is a very hard virus when it affects people. And I'm not simply trying to pressurize or force anyone to come. But whenever that case is there, that it's simply a lazy attitude that is keeping people from the house of the Lord, then that is wrong. Some may ask the question, well, what is the difference? As long as we're hearing God's Word, what difference does it make if we're sitting in the church or we're sitting at home? As long as we hear the preaching, sure is not enough. Well, let me say firstly that that is not biblical. You go to, and you think of the book of Acts, and God willing, we will return to it in the future at some stage. But you think of the book of Acts in the New Testament church, there was always a set place to go to worship. Acts 1 was the upper room. Acts 10 was Cornelius' house. Acts 16 was at the riverside. You think of Acts 16, 31. It says, on the Sabbath, Paul and Silas, it's speaking of them, we went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was wont to be made. It was a set place to go to worship the Lord. And as I said, I'm not seeking to pressurize those who are staying away for legitimate reasons. As we highlighted at the beginning, even in our safety announcements, if anyone is under the effects of COVID or showing any symptoms, then we respectfully ask them not to come. But as I've highlighted for those that are simply staying away for the sake of it, then that is going against the Scriptures. Another important reason, not only is it biblical, but we can see as well, the importance of fellowship and gathering to God's house. As it says in Psalm 122 in the verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me. In other words, there was that encouragement was being given to David. There were those of like precious faith that were coming to David and were saying to him, come with us to God's house. We're going there ourselves. Come with us. We want to join together. We want to have fellowship one with the other. Fellowship. Gathering together for worship is important. You think of the words of Psalm 55, the verse 14. It says, We took sweet counsel together and walked on to the house of God in company. Now, were those in those days who communed with each other, walked with each other, talked with each other along the way as they went to God's house? You think of the opening verses of 1 John 1. In the verse 1, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled off the word of life. For the life was manifested, we have seen it, bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. Of course, those opening verses speaking completely about the manifestation of Christ. Christ manifest in the flesh. But the verse 3, it says, That ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. The fellowship of joining with others of like precious faith. For those that are saved coming together, the gathering and also of the unsaved, and we pray for that each and every time that the doors are open, that unsaved will gather with us to hear words whereby they can be saved. But as I've highlighted, yes, the reasons for coming together, biblical reasons, fellowship reasons. But tonight I very simply just want to look at the joy of coming to God's house. The joy of coming together. To God's house. Firstly, I want you to see in the verse 1 the joy experienced. The joy experienced. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. The psalmist here, as he begins his song of degrees, he shows forth his heart, he shows forth his feelings. David heart, David's heart was such that he wanted to worship God in his house. 
And his joy is evident even in the fact that he can go and he can worship the Lord. His joy is also in the fact that there are others who likewise want to go and worship and the fact that they want David to go with them. The men and women, regardless of what family, what friends, what community or nation may think, that they are happy to identify with the Lord, that they are happy to identify with the Lord's house. You know, there's nothing better than to love the place and to love going to the place where according to Psalm 26 and verse 8, the Lord's honor dwelleth. That's a wonderful verse. You consider this house, it's made with hands, yes, but this house is consecrated. This house is placed here for the worship of God. And the Lord has said, even Psalm 26 and 8, this is where his honor dwelleth. I know that many in these days would cry. Even the words of Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 3 says, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. You see, whilst there is that collective thought, whilst there is that collective action in going together and gathering together to the house of the Lord, yet there still is a personal attachment and there still is a personal experience for David in that joy of going to God's house. He said in Psalm 22, the verse 1, he says, I was glad. He didn't simply make it easy and say we were all glad. He very much brought it home to his own heart. I was glad. You know, I'm sure tonight as you made your way to this house, there was joy in your heart. Finally being able to come once again into the house of the Lord to worship. And I'm sure that this Sunday morning as you get up and you put on your outfit and you get ready and you come to the house of the Lord, I believe we'll be coming with joy this Sunday morning. We'll be experiencing that joy of actually being gathering together in the Sunday morning, the Lord's day, in the Lord's house. But I wonder the weeks to come. We still have that joy. Oh yes, it's something new, getting back into the house of the Lord. But week by week, Sunday by Sunday, Wednesday by Wednesday, will you come to this house with joy in your heart? Rejoicing that you can. Rejoicing that there's a freedom even to gather in this fashion. Rejoicing that there's a house that is built even for the worship of God. The means of grace that are here the preaching of God's Word. Not simply gathering here in legalism. Gathering here simply, oh, it's a Sunday, I'd better go. And the laws dictate, I have to go. But rather gathering together with joy in your heart. You see, we don't gather together and we don't expect people to come just because of some pharisaical law. Some stipulation, you must come to God's house. We look for, we long for each and every one that is saved, washed in the blood to gather to this house with joy in their hearts. With a delight as we come into the house of God. We gather to praise, to lift our hearts and our Ebenezer's unto the Lord. We gather to this house to remember the death Rejoice in the resurrection. To rejoice in the salvation that has been so freely given by the Lord to each and every one who comes to Him. It was an experienced joy that David had. But then secondly, I want you to see that it's also an expressed joy. An expressed joy. He said in verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. David clearly states it audibly, publicly. I was glad. I have joy in my heart. I am rejoicing that I am able to go into the house of the Lord. You see, David loved the Lord and therefore he loved the Lord's house. And he loved every opportunity that he had to go to it. I'm sure he kept all of the, the different law or the different sacraments, the different sacrifices, the special days in the Jewish calendar. I'm sure that he was there. 
But I believe that this is a passage that is showing us that others are just simply going to pray and they come to David and they say, please come with us. And David has another opportunity on top of the regular opportunities, as it were, to simply gather and to go with other brethren and sisters and to go to God's house. It fills him with real joy. It's not some man-made emotion. It's not something that's been stirred up by a crowd or by the world. The expression on the lips of David it came from a joy that was in his heart. A joy that was unending. A joy that was unchanging. You see, for David, the joy comes as a result of love. A love which was given to him by the Lord. A love which was given to him for the Lord. A love which came from the Lord. A love which returns to the Lord. First John 4 and verse 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. And David's expression of joy here in this passage, it comes from the heart of love. It comes from a desire to God to love the Lord's house. A desire to worship and to praise the Lord for all that he has done. You see, child of God and for each and every child of God, the opening of the doors of the church, it gives each one the opportunity to come and to praise the Lord for what he has done for them individually, for what he's done for families, for what he's done for friends, for what he's done in a community. And brethren and sisters, as we gather in this house and even as we come to prayer this night, may we come with praise and with thanksgiving in our hearts for what the Lord has done. You know, whenever you look back 15 weeks of lockdown and you wonder, and you can look and say it was wrong that we were ever shut down, that's the opinion of some. But even through the shutting down and whatever's right and whatever's wrong in it, and only time and the Lord will know in terms of why the reasons and everything that happened. But through this shutting down, men and women across this land and even further afield have heard the gospel for the first time ever. Unsaved. Roman Catholic, Protestant. Church of Ireland, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian. All hearing the word of God, not only from this house, but thank God for many other houses of God that are faithful to the gospel. We've also had a request to have a testimony translated into Indian. That wouldn't have happened apart from the lockdown. See, in everything, God is in control of it all. And we may look with the human hand and we may say, well, what caused coronavirus? And what caused and where were the steps and where were the mistakes along the way that caused the entire world to shut down? But here's the reality. God's in control of it all. And through everything that has happened, God's fingerprints been right along because he's led men and women to come in even through their phones, their iPads, their laptops and to hear the gospel. And there's a joy to be expressed. And David expressed it anew, and we've looked at it even over this lockdown time, the Psalms week by week as we have went through David's Psalms. And we have saw the trials, we have saw the hardships, we have saw the struggles in David's life. We've saw the ups and downs before he was keen, after he was keen, and everything that was going on in his life. And yet here's David in, in front of everything and everything that had happened in his past, and yet there's still a joy because he can go into God's house. See, David, that personal aspect, again, he's considered the salvation of his own soul from sin. He's considered the peace that he had with God. He's considered the fact he's justified from sin. He's been declared righteous in the eyes of God. He's been adopted into the family of God. He's that promise as well that his home is in glory. And regardless of what happens in the rest of his life, regardless of what happens in the nation of Israel, there's joy in his heart as he goes to the house of the Lord because he knows Israel, Jerusalem's not my final home. 
I'm going upwards. It was a joy that had to be expressed and a praise that had to be rendered. I believe that each and every Christian, when you consider the mercy and the grace of God, your individual life, ought to have that desire in their hearts to come and to worship the Lord. To have that joy even brimming within their hearts. To enter His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Oh, that in the days that lie ahead, the expression that will be upon our lips and upon our hearts will be the words of First Chronicles 29 and 3, I have set my affection to the house of God. May that be the joy that is expressed by each and by every one. The joy experienced, the joy expressed. One final thing, the joy expected. The joy expected. He says in the verse, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into, notice the final phrase, the house of of the Lord. Not simply let us go into a place. Not simply let us go back to your wonderful palace, David, because David, you've built an amazing palace. Jerusalem had the beautiful palace even for David to live in. The temple was not built until Solomon's time. So the house of God for David was a tent. But yet he went to that place which was known as the house of the Lord. He went with a joy because of what he expected to find and to have in God's house. You know, each and every time that we come to the house of the Lord, firstly, we can expect the Lord to keep His promise. Matthew 18 and 20, where two or three are gathered together. In my name, there am I in the midst of them. We can expect the Lord to continue His blessing upon this house and the gathering together in it. Genesis 28 and verse 17, There is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. We can expect His glory to be found in this house. You know, I think of the words of Second Chronicles 7 and verse 2. As the temple is opened by Solomon, that great day of the, the opening, and everything is perfect, everything is gleaming. And yet, Second Chronicles 7, verse 2, it says, The priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the house. We've never experienced that. And I believe as you look through the rest of the Old Testament, New Testament, and every church that there's ever been, the New Testament church, there's never been an experience like the opening day when the glory of God came down in such a way that everyone had to get out. But oh, for a taste of that glory. Oh, that we will come with expectant hearts. Brethren and sisters, when we gather to this house, whether it be the Sunday or the Wednesday night, that we come with expectation that God will be here. That God will make Himself known in this house. That we will see a glimpse. Just even a glimpse. Of the glory of God. That we would feel His presence. That His presence would be such a real reality to each one. Expect His glory. Expect His presence. Expect His joy. Isaiah 56, the verse 7, it says, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Tonight, 
the days ahead. Each time that the Lord affords to us, each opportunity that we are given, the providence of the Lord to gather into His house. Child of God, come with gladness. Come with joy. Come with praise. Come with hearts that are open. Receptive to God's Word. Come rejoicing. And then leave rejoicing. Come expecting. And then leave praising. There's a joy in this house. And there ought to be a joy in our hearts to come to this house. And if anything through this lockdown period, may it never be the case that we take coming to this house for granted. May it never be simply, oh, we'll go next time. Or we'll go next week. But rather may it be the case the door is open the Lord is there. I'm going with joy and with praise and with thanksgiving. May the Lord bless his word to each and to every heart for his name's sake. Amen.